Hey guys, Bob here from Ross Strength and Muscle with another excellent question from one of my excellent viewers of one of my excellent videos. This question comes from QE and he asked this question on my video, every low carb diet explained. Really went into detail in every type of low carb diet, even going into detail in every type of carb refeed on a low carb diet. If you haven't watched the video, click on the link below in the description to this video, watch it. It's really awesome. It explains a whole lot, okay? So his question was, doesn't higher protein end up as carbs eventually with de novo gluconeogenesis, okay? Now, for those of you who don't know what gluconeogenesis is, it is the process by which your body turns amino acids, okay, protein, into glucose, okay? And the idea is basically that if you eat, quote, too much protein, your body is gonna use that protein, turn it into glucose, okay? You're going to have so much glucose in your body that you're not going to have to burn fat for fuel, so you're not gonna get into ketosis or you're gonna get, quote, kicked out of ketosis, okay? That is the theory, okay? The scientific fact is, yes, your body can take amino acids through gluconeogenesis, turn it into glucose, and you will be producing your own carbs, even though you don't consume any carbs. Now, let's talk about the practicality of this, okay? It is an extremely inefficient method of fueling your body. Literally, the only reason for gluconeogenesis is you eat carbs, you burn carbs. You don't have carbs, you turn fat, whether it's you know fat you eat or fat in your body, through ketosis into keto bo the ketone bodies and you burn that for fuel. But there are parts of your body, notably your brain, that need glucose, they need carbs, they need sugar to run efficiently on. They can't use ketones. So what does your body do if you have no carbs? Well, you take amino acids and you make them into carbs, okay? Very small amount just enough to fuel the parts of your body that you need, okay, carbs to fuel. So it's not an extremely efficient method where I eat 10 chicken breasts, all that protein gets turned into glucose and bang, I'm running on carbs, I'm not in ketosis, or I get thrown out of ketosis like the guys say, um, you know, because, you know, because you, are, uh, you have so, much, so many carbs in your body, so much glucose, it don't work like that. It is extremely inefficient. When I talk about gluconeogenesis, what I say is, as an example, is can I put my car in neutral, wait for a very strong wind, and will that wind move my car? Theoretically, yes. If my car is on a flat surface in neutral and there's a strong enough wind, my car will move a little bit because it will be blown by the wind. It is a proven scientific fact, it does work. You can move your car by waiting for a tailwind. Now, can I get in my car in New York City and drive to LA with no gas, just by putting it in neutral, waiting for a tailwind, and driving 90 miles an hour on the interstate? No, you can't because it ain't that efficient. Does it work? Yes. Can it move your car a little bit? Does it work? Sometimes. If everything's perfect, a little bit, enough to be noticeable, yeah, it moves your car, but it's not efficient. I can't just drive all day and never you know, use any gas, never turn on my car because I just got a tailwind. It don't work, it's not that efficient. It does work, it does happen, but it is so inefficient, we don't even need to discuss it as a form of locomotion, okay? Gluconeogenesis is the same way, okay? If you don't take in any carbohydrates, your body will burn you know, amino acids, okay? It will take amino acids through gluconeogenesis, make carbs, okay, make glucose, and use it to fuel your brain, whatever parts of your body needs glucose. But it's not an efficient method. Like I said, it's not like I can eat 10 chicken breasts, turn it into carbs, and just run on carbs and not go into ketosis, okay? It's just a little bit enough to fuel your brain. How many calories do you think your brain needs in a day? How many grams of carbs do you think your brain needs in a day? Does it produce enough to have a like, right now I'm on 4,000 calories a day. I'm not gonna get 4,000 calories a day through gluconeogenesis, okay? It ain't gonna happen. So what happens is, when you don't eat carbs, your body automatically goes into ketosis. 
okay? It takes fat, whether it's dietary fat or body fat, turns it into ketone bodies and your body burns those ketone bodies for fuel. You can literally run a 100 mile super marathon near Western States 100 or whatever the hell those things are called through ketosis, okay? And like I said, yes, if you don't take in carbs, it'll create a little bit of glucose, but it will go just into your brain. It will just be a little bit enough to fuel you know, those parts of your body that need glucose. So you are never going to stay out of ketosis or get thrown out of ketosis because you take in too much protein. Let's go ahead and give you some examples. Okay, number one, if gluconeogenesis was so efficient, why is there a thing called rabbit starvation? North American Indians, okay, Native Americans of North America, in places where there are certain times when all you have access to is rabbit meat, talk about rabbit starvation. They say you can eat rabbit meat until your stomach is distended and you're bloated and you're vomiting because you're stuffing yourself full and you will still starve to death because rabbit meat apparently is really goddamn lean, okay? You're not taking in carbs and you're not taking in enough fat, so you will die. Okay, if gluconeogenesis was a thing, why don't you eat just 55 rabbits a day, create 5,000 grams of fucking carbs a day, and fucking, you know, that's 20,000 know, calories a day, and just live a long, healthy life? Because gluconeogenesis is not that efficient. It doesn't create that much, you know, that much glucose. So that's one reason. Like I said, rabbit starvation. Look it up and you will see that you cannot live on protein alone. Okay, if gluconeogenesis was that efficient, you could, but you can't, so it shows how inefficient it is. Okay, another thing, people talk about taking in too much protein. There is no such thing about taking in too much protein because your body's made of it, okay? If you didn't eat protein, okay, because you're afraid to go into gluconeogenesis, you would still be in gluconeogenesis, your body, because you don't eat any protein, it would suck up your muscle. It would suck up and break down your internal organs to get the amino acids, the protein, to use for gluconeogenesis to fuel your body or your brain, okay? So what I'm saying is, no matter how little, if you eat no carbs, no protein, just 100% fat, your body would still break down muscle tissue and organs to get the amino acids for gluconeogenesis. So it's not like I ate 55 grams of protein today instead of 50 and holy shit, now I'm knocked out of, out of ketosis because of gluconeogenesis. That shit don't work, it's not that efficient, okay? So what I'm basically saying is, you know, if you don't have enough carbs in your diet, you're gonna burn body fat for fuel, okay? If you don't have enough fat in your, in your uh, diet, you will eventually get very lean and then you'll die. Okay, gluconeogenesis will not kick you out of ketosis. It will not save your life. It will not fuel your body. Okay, because it's so inefficient, it just provides enough for your brain to work. So, you know, like I said, that is how a high protein ketogenic diet works. Okay, whether you're bulking, cutting, or maintaining, I always have, and I always have my people take in a whole hell of a lot of protein, and it has not once kicked anybody out of ketosis. Okay, and I'm gonna do another video about this too, but fuck ketosis. Who cares how many ketones you produce? You don't start a diet because you wanna brag about how much, you know, what your ketone numbers are. Oh, look at me, I got ketone five trillion here. Look at me, I'm better than you because I have five trillion ketones coming out of my piss. Who cares? You fucking use a ketogenic diet to fucking feel good, mental clarity, lose weight, get lean, fucking whatever, whatever reason it is that you're going on a ketogenic diet, I guarantee you, your reason for going on a ketogenic diet is not to brag about how many ketones you produce, okay? So fuck that in general. But like I said, the bottom line is, I've always been on high protein keto, my people have been on high protein keto and not once have I or has anybody I've trained ever said, oh my God, I feel like crap. I'm totally out of fucking ketosis because, you know, I'm taking in too much protein. It just don't work like that. Don't worry about it. Okay. You know, like I said in my other last three, four videos, get your body fat adapted. Okay. Go ahead. And if you want to lose fat, consume fewer, less fat, which means you're consuming fewer calories. You want to go ahead and go to maintenance. Increase the fat until you're at you know maintenance calories. You wanna bulk up, increase the fat a little bit more until you have a little bit more energy. And that's the way it goes, okay? Do not worry about gluconeogenesis kicking you out or keeping you out of ketosis. Do not worry about it at all, okay? Anyway, 
Appreciate you, the question. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Uh, any questions, just go ahead and put them down below. I'll make a video like I did this one. And um, aside from that, like I said, if you want to know exactly how to completely control your body composition, including building muscle mass, including building strength, and including maintaining your leanness, check out Low Carb Cutting and Bulking at lowcarbcuttingandbulking.com. I explain everything, including getting fat adapted, you know, getting lean, how not to cheat on your diet, you know, everything that you possibly need to know to change your body composition on a low carb diet, okay? Anyway, lowcarbcuttingandbulking.com, check it out if you have not already. If you haven't, subscribe to the Jam channel. I'm obviously doing a whole lot of videos. This is my second video today. And um, like I said, aside from that, I appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.